Hi everyone, I'm just here to do a very quick intro to this video, which is once again going to be a vlog based around the color of the cover, and today we're doing yellow and orange. And I am going to be reading a lot of yellow and orange books that ended up being some new favorites, some surprising books, and just like so many exciting moments that I can't wait to share with you. So before we jump in, I do want to tell you this time what the next color is going to be. I have not fully decided, so it's either going to be purple or black, and I want you to tell me what books you like in those colors or what books you want to read in those colors so that next time I can maybe read some of those or share what people told me about in that video. And yeah, without any further ado, let's just jump straight in. I hope you enjoyed this vlog, and let's do this. <laughs> Hi everyone, so just a super quick interruption, I ended up including a clip of a totally yellow book in here that I completely adored and I read before talking to you, but I still filmed about, you know, um, how much I loved it, and I was going to put it in a different video, but that didn't end up happening, and so I thought, you know what, we can start off with this, because it is yellow and I completely loved it, so let's just go back to the clip where I read it and talk to you about why you should read it and why I loved it so fucking much. I've had some rough days at work, so we're lying down, we're relaxing, and we're about to talk about another very exciting book. And it is also another book that I ended up reading without talking to you while I was reading it. But this is Lizzie Blake's Best Mistake by Maisie Eddings, one of my most anticipated releases of the year. I absolutely loved Brush With Love by Maisie Eddings, which was her first book. And so this was absolutely a five-star prediction. I was so excited for it. And I loved it. So it says a lot that I basically read this in like two days. Even though I was super busy, you know, I had to like socialize and whatever. I didn't really have time, but I just like this book definitely had me hooked immediately. I uh, it just jumped straight in the story and I just love that and I feel like lately I have been busier than normal and I'm just kind of distracted and I really need books that just jump straight in because if they don't jump straight in, I just don't have the patience and I just don't want to read it and you know we don't want that <laughs> so let's talk about the plot first um it is an adult romance it has accidental pregnancy not a spoiler because it's basically the setup of the book <laughs> so we have our teaming characters lizzie and lizzie and rake and they basically have a one night stand and like they kind of very randomly meet at a bar and they have a spark, you know, they have a really fun conversation, some fun banter and whatever. And then Lizzie gets pregnant. She's very chaotic, a like free spirit. <laughs> and she has ADHD and a very big personality. And so she basically feels like her whole life is a mess and she's just pure chaos and the pregnancy just adds to that and she kind of feels like a failure, but she kind of also feels like it might be the right thing for her to have a child. It just feels right for her to have the child, even though, you know, it's like the last thing that she planned on. And Rake, basically, when she tells him, you know, she tells him in a sense that's like, um, you should know, but like, you know, I'm never going to speak to you again. Because basically, he works in Australia, he lives there, and he's just on a visit. And so he just leaves like two days later, and um, she tells him when he's there. And so he's like, you know, I'm going to come back and I'm going to help you and we're going to do this together. And both of them are very emotionally unavailable. <laughs> but Rake is absolutely like, I'm doing this. It does not feel right to not do this. Even though he's, you know, like scared of any relationship with Lizzie, he wants to have a relationship with his child. And so they basically enter this like super fun, very interesting, like, we're going to be co-parenting situation and they move in together as well. So generally, any of the tropes around pregnancy don't really work for me. I don't hate it as much as some people, but I don't look for it either. But in this, I feel like it was done so well. Like if you absolutely hate it, you know, it's probably not going to be for you. But I feel like since it was done like at the beginning of a story, something about that really worked. Because so often accidental pregnancy is done like near the end of the book in the conflict. And I feel like that always becomes so stupid. But this was just, it just worked. And it was so fun. 
And I love Lizzie. I love Rake. I love how not only do the two of them have a really strong personality, but I feel like this book has a strong personality. <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense, but it just like was a reading experience unlike any I've had before. I feel like even though it might have some like basic tropes, the setup and everything that happened, I have never read anything like this. And I just loved it. Like it is quirky a little bit in like I use that in like the best sense and it just feels unique and super fun lighthearted it is funny it is steamy it is charming it is just like absolutely everything i loved it so much so it is not a five star i ended up giving it 4.5 for some reason in the first half i was just like this feels like a four star but then i fell in love with lizzie and rake completely and i just loved their dynamic and again like i was just I was hooked the entire time. Like, I inhaled this book. If you want some forced proximity and, like, a funny, spicy, charming romance, you need to pick this up. If you want ADHD representation, you need to pick this up. Just pick this book up. I have started the next book, and that is going to be Love, Theoretically, by Allie Hazelwood. I am on page 210. And let's just say I am absolutely fucking in love with it. It is everything that I wanted and needed and I don't even know where to begin. So let's talk about the plot, but oh my God. So we have Elsie and Jack and Elsie basically is fake dating um, Jack's brother because there's like this company app thing where you can get paid to fake date people for specific occasions or whatever. Usually it's like one event or something, but Elsie's been fake dating this guy for a while because they kind of became friends and he basically just wanted to hire her so that his family could stop asking him when he's going to have a relationship because he's never really been in a long-term relationship and he doesn't think he wants one. Jack obviously meets Elsie through that and he feels like something's not adding up, but then they also find out that they work in the same field and in the same like place and all of that and Jack is also one of the people who um, makes the decision on if Elsie's going to be hired for like the pos a position that she desperately wants and desperately needs because she is very very broke and her she actually needs her job and she just wants an improvement she wants to pursue her passions just like all of Ali Hazelwood's books this has that like stem setting and all of that which I always say that like I don't particularly like or dislike it it is just not something that is for me I don't care about science in that way it is completely beyond me <laughs> but I think it's cool I just yeah but oh my gosh Elsie is everything to me. I see myself way too much in her and it is making me feel seen but also called out in so many fucking ways. And Jack, I already loved, I don't remember his name unfortunately, the guy in Love on the Brain loved him. But Jack, definitely my favorite. He is like, I, I, I don't even know because Elsie basically is just like, you know, she's just for the fig dating. She is very good at pretending to be someone she's not and someone that she thinks the other person needs and molding herself into the vision she, she thinks others expect from her and all of that. And she does that super a lot and she has very low confidence and, you know, she thinks that if she's not going to pretend to be someone else, no one's actually going to like her. And she does not know who to be with Jack because she can't read him and figure out what he wants from her. And that frustrates her, but he likes her immediately. And it is absolutely everything. He is fucking obsessed and I'm so here for it. And they definitely have kind of like a, I wouldn't really call it hate to love, but like Elsie thinks he hates her. And so she kind of hates him. He did something with like the work as well before that she thinks is a betrayal. I don't fully understand it. I don't think we... Like, I think we'll find out more details about it as the book goes on and whatever. But I just, I love the dynamics in here so much. I love the, like, workplace romance vibes. And the banter in this is absolutely spectacular. It is hilarious. It is iconic. It is so funny. It is so entertaining. It is so deliciously slow burn. It is so exciting. Like, everything I could ask for. And I'm so happy. And there was one line that I have to read to you. So I have to read this shit to you because like I was just sitting there staring at the page like, are you fucking serious? You did not just say that. 
So if you don't want to hear anything, um, skip ahead, you know, like 20 seconds. But basically, Jack is telling Elsie, it's easier like that, isn't it? Never showing anyone who you really are. That way, if something goes wrong, if someone rejects you, then it's not about you, is it? When you're yourself, that's when you're exposed, vulnerable. But if you hold back, losing a game is always painful, but knowing that you haven't played your best hand makes it bearable. You did not, like, you, like, you did not just fucking say that. Like, you did not just say that. I feel like I know Elsie felt called out, and I felt called out, because I was like, oh my god. That hit too hard, okay? I did not need that. <laughs> like, I kind of did, but fuck me. Yeah, like, fuck you, Ali Hazelwood. Fuck you, Jack. Um, yeah, so anyway, long story short, I am obsessed with this book. I literally had to force myself to leave the coffee shop um, because it was closing and I did not want to stop reading this fucking book. So, um, the second after I eat and film this clip, I, I will finish this book. Like, inhale it. I basically, like, I started it yesterday and I wouldn't say, like, the beginning was slow or anything, but, like, you know, I was enjoying it. It was nice. But, like, after the first, like, 70 pages or whatever, I was, like, so hooked that I could not be unhooked. So, and I just know there's gonna be like so much care and love between them and they're gonna be so sexy together as well. <laughs> and even though I, even though I don't give a fuck about science, I love nerds. Fucking love, like I'm a nerd, um, you know, in like the, in a very different category, but like fucking love nerds, introverts, any people who like get really invested in the things that they care about. Like, that's my fucking kind of people, you know? And so I'm obsessed with this. Like, I am so happy that I love this book. Like, I really love Ellie Hazelwood. It's stupid because sometimes I'm like, maybe I shouldn't love her books that much because a lot of people uh, judge them a lot, which obviously, again, like, it's like, obviously it's valid if you don't like them. But I fucking love them. I love her. Like, sure, you know, the books are repetitive when it comes to the, the settings and some of the tropes. And yes, she usually writes about tiny heroines and giant men. And who cares? Like, you know, like, I don't give a fuck. Like, if I want something else than that, I'm going to go somewhere else. But this is just what she writes and it works for me. And I know what to expect. And that is really comforting. And obviously, if you don't like that, that is completely valid, but I love that and a lot of other people love that. This was exactly what I needed. I desperately, desperately needed the escapism and the comfort and the fun and entertainment. And it is just like so funny and it has such a strong, like they both have such a strong personality. The only thing that I don't like about Ali Hazelwood's books is she writes one point of view. So always the heroine's point of view. And I hate that. Like, <laughs> I can see the purpose, but I, I hate that. I think, personally, every single ro almost every single romance would benefit from having the both of the point of views. I'll talk to you when I finish the book, but yeah. We have a bit of a different angle. I hope this looks okay. I... <laughs> It is late. I'm exhausted. We're gonna make this work. I have orange juice yet again. And I am here to tell you that I finished completely inhaled love theoretically and we're gonna talk about it. And I also want to talk to you about some plans right now of what I'm thinking of reading next because I haven't been able to prioritize this video lately because I've been super busy. I've been, again, as always, working on too many vlogs. This was supposed to be a summer vlog, okay? In my defense, I live in Edinburgh. This summer has been the least summery summer of my entire life, and so it hasn't exactly motivated me to do this. Uh, at the same time, though, all the books that I want to read, I want to read them. Like, I just, I, it is time, I want to do this, and so it's definitely going to be up in September at this point, but you know what? I feel like orange and yellow, like orange and yellow can work for September. We're gonna read a lot more. I am excited. We're gonna do it. So, anyways, this book was incredible. I don't even know where to begin. Like, I already began, but <laughs> I loved this so much. 
like the slow burn, the build up of their romance, the like guy fucking obsessed and in love with the heroine. Like he is gone. He is so gone for her. He would die for her. He would do anything to make sure that Elsie is happy and well taken care of and living her truth and just like, <laughs> oh my God, the way, the way Jack behaves towards her fuck my life. Like, I don't, I, and Elsie is definitely one of my favorite heroines. I related to her more than a lot, like, more than most characters that I can think of. And I did not expect that, you know? Like, I obviously, my story, like, my actual life, um, you know, the science shit, obviously, I have none of that. I do none of that. I have done none of that. I am never going to do anything like that. <laughs> But, like, feeling, you know, super lost in life and, like, not knowing where to go and her whole thing where she feels like she has to change depending on the person she's with so that they don't abandon her and so that they love her and stay in her life and constantly sacrificing her needs for the sake of others. I, like, relate to that so fucking hard. And if that sounds like something that you feel, you need to read this. Because, like, it made me feel so seen. It called me out. It was, like, horrible but amazing at the same time. <laughs> and I'm so happy that I read this book. I feel like it was the perfect time for me to read this book. And even though, like, it just, like, it is, like, just a super addicting, beautiful, fun romance. But those things that it deals with, like, it also just made it more impactful and, like, meaningful to me, and I just loved it so much. I would say more, but I don't have any brain cells left, and I just, I don't think I need to say more. I feel like <laughs> most people are gonna read this or not gonna read this, depending on whether they like Allie Hazelwood or not, because I feel like everyone has fucking heard of them at this point, but if you haven't, I do absolutely think it's worth the hype, and you do not have to read any other books by Ali Hazelwood to read this. We do have an appearance of some characters from the past. But, yeah. That is this. And now I am not quite sure what to do. So, I have not listened to an audiobook in like a week at least. And so, I think that the next book we might read is Thank You for Listening, I think. And I don't fully remember the author's name. So, whatever. It's going to be up on the screen. Um, so this is partially, I was originally going to read it for pink. Technically, yellow is at the center of this. <laughs> and I just really want to read this book. I also do feel like this is a book that I really need to read right now. And again, I, like, I, I'm reading a lot of contemporary romances at the moment. And I just need to read something, like, a little bit different to mix things up, which this still should be, like, a romance but also kind of more focused on the heroine's journey. And I feel like from what I saw in the description, it seemed like something that would really hit me hard right now at this point in my life. And so obviously I'm going to tell you more about the book when we start it, but I think that will be the thing that we do next. As for physical reading, I am kind of tempted to read this. So this also, I wasn't sure if I would include in a video like this, but honestly, I need an excuse to read this book. I've been wanting to read it for ages and I started it, like you can see here, and I just have not gotten back to it and I'm just like, why? I think I'll read it again. It's kind of just like, thank you for listening. The yellow is like at the center and there's like a different solid uh, background color. This is historical romance. So again, we are mixing it up. I just, the thing that I love so much about the color cover videos is I can read literally anything. <laughs> And the color scheme makes it feel cohesive, but, like, I just love, obviously, I do read romance the most, but I do also love some other genres, and so having that variety just makes me really happy. So, I do have, I am looking at some orange and, you know, yellow books on my shelf, um, and I have many others that I either mentioned or didn't mention, but I think I will shut up now. I will figure out what I'm going to do, and, yeah, I have two days off. And so we are definitely going to be reading at least one book for this. So I have been listening to Thank You for Listening by Julia Whalen, and I'm really enjoying it. So I'm not quite halfway through, but I'm like at 40% and I just felt like talking to you about it. And, you know, so let's do that. <laughs> so I don't fully remember what I told you, but... This is an adult romance that is supposed to be kind of more like 
women's fiction or whatever, but still a romance, just, you know, quite a bit focused on the heroine's emotional journey and all of that. And I don't always love that, but, like, obviously I love romance and, like, I am a romance reader the most, but I still love when it's done well. I love when books dive deep into, like, the emotional journey and all of that. And the description of this book just sounded like exactly what I needed. And I want to read you some things from, like, the synopsis because that is what made me want to pick it up. And so far, I... It hasn't gone fully deep just yet, but, like, I can see some, you know, little bits and pieces of what it, like, promised to be. <laughs> and it is amazing. So, um, basically, in the little line at the top, it says that it follows a former actress turned successful audiobook narrator who has lost sight of her dreams after a tragic after a tragic accident and her journey of self-discovery, love, and acceptance when she agrees to narrate one last romance novel. And there's also another line that says, if she can learn to risk everything for desires she has long buried, she will discover a world of intimacy and acceptance she never believed would be hers. And so that just sounded absolutely wonderful and just exactly like something I want to and need to read right now. <laughs> and I'm really enjoying it. As the little line suggests, um, the heroine is a former actress. She used to be just, you know, really successful and all of that, but she had an accident and the accident left her with a disability. And obviously there is a lot of ableism in the um, movie industry. And so she couldn't really act anymore the way she used to. And she also just has a lot of trauma and pain from that time. And so the thought of coming back to it is just like really just absolutely terrifying. And so she has been an audiobook narrator. And at the same time, even in that, she is afraid like of a lot of things, <laughs> specifically narrating romance again. And so she uh, does not do that anymore because she has been hurt way too much before. She doesn't want to feel that strongly connected to love anymore and just doesn't want to narrate romance. But she gets this super cool opportunity to narrate with a guy who is like one of the most famous uh, narrators within the audio romance audiobook sphere. Yeah, they kind of like start texting and, you know, they make this romantic, um, sexy audiobook together. And yeah, that is kind of like the main premise. And it is really cute, really fun. I just loved the concept because I love texting. I love audiobooks and the thought of like, an, you know, the whole thing. I just love it. <laughs> the like romantic parts so far have been like quite slow building. And I'm not fully sure where it's going to go because there is a point at the beginning where the heroine kind of has this like really lovely night with this random guy and I don't know if it's connected. really like it so far. It feels like a four star right now. It doesn't fully feel, you know, a new favorite. I feel absolutely super connected to it, but I do feel like it could absolutely build up to a five star and I think it is gonna go deeper into the emotions, obviously deeper into the romance, and I'm really excited to see where it goes. It is a little di different from like the typical romances that I read, but it does still feel like a romance. So, I'll keep you posted, obviously. I will probably talk, talk to you after I finish the book. Hi everyone, it is time for some extremely exciting updates. I am so happy. You know, I told you I wanted to read more books for this video and I was feeling a little bit stuck for a second and then that now I'm just like absolutely thriving and I'm ready to read a thousand things and finish this video and just, yes, so. I finished Thank You For Listening yesterday and oh my god, so I, <laughs> where do I even begin? So I kind of, for a long time, I thought I would actually really like this book. The description, again, the things that I read to you, that just sounded exactly like something I wanted and needed, but I think I was still like a little bit hesitant because I don't always love like the women's fiction-y books. I don't really like literary fiction as a whole and so if it goes into that direction a little too much it's usually not really for me and this book just kind of gave me like Emily Henry vibes and I don't necessarily dislike Emily Henry 
I actually absolutely loved People We Meet on Vacation back when I read it, but it feels like a lifetime ago and just for some reason when I think of Emily Henry, it's like it just doesn't vibe with me. <laughs> But even though it doesn't necessarily actually, like, even though it's not necessarily the case, I actually only finished People We Meet on Vacation, and then I, like, DNF'd Beach Read, but I didn't really get that far into it, and I haven't tried anything else since. And so, you know, I didn't know what to expect. And I do think it has kind of Emily Henry vibes in the sense of some of the, like, style of, like, what genre it is and stuff like that but again i'm not like n very i don't exactly know the details of emily henry's book so i'm not going to compare the two but i do think if you love emily henry you could absolutely love this because i don't know if i love emily henry but i absolutely love this <laughs> so this book follows swanee and she definitely is like the center of the book. It does have just her point of view. And I always complain when there's not the point of view of like both of the main characters. But in this case, I don't want to complain at all. Like obviously I would still like it, <laughs> but it doesn't feel like it's missing because it makes sense for the story to be about Swanee and her journey and her love story and it is focused on her but it also is absolutely a romance and i love the romance so much i just feel like the story that she goes on really resonated with me just like i expected in such a deep beautiful level and we also have some like emotional discovery <laughs> even when within the hero's journey as well like he also just kind of feels lost in different ways and so we just have two people who come together who both feel a little lost and a little broken and they both suffered with loss this book does deal before i forget i do want to mention it does deal with loss of a loved one and dementia and things around that quite a lot with basically swanee's grandma and then the hero's like um family as well and so that is quite a, it's not like the biggest focus or anything, but it is quite a big focus of the book and it does go into it quite deeply. So if that is a topic that you want to avoid. Definitely do not pick this book up. I just loved the shit out of this book. I feel like it was actually really well balanced. And if you're someone who likes a lot of layers in your books or your romance books specifically, I think, you know, it is just like such a beautiful romance. It is really powerful in the self-discovery. There's quite a lot going on, but it doesn't feel like too much. And I personally, I always say that I love books that are focused on the romance and that is most absolutely true, but I felt like the things that were in here that was not the romance, I still absolutely loved and I thought was well done. And so, yeah, but let's talk about the romance actually itself. <laughs> Because, like, I didn't want to say it was my favorite part of the book because, again, I was super invested in Swanee's journey and it resonated with me so much. So even though, you know, I loved all those things, I absolutely adored the romance in here. I feel like that was the part that I was actually the most hesitant about. Like, I thought, you know, I would connect to the personal journey and whatever, but I wasn't sure if the romance would fully hit. And it was so fucking good. We kind of have, I don't want to say too much, but we have kind of a very specific new take on like the you've got male vibes where you know like real life and texting uh collides and whatever loved it you know like the texting in here the plot of you know two narrators who were narrating the a romance audiobook together and um slowly get closer through that and the fact that the book actually addressed like romance books specifically in some ways mentioning like the tropes and conventions and things like that and it was just like so fun and it was clear that the author actually really loves romance books and so the romance ended up being really tender and beautiful and they had some amazing communication it felt really realistic in such a beautiful way and it got a little steamy, not super a lot. So if that's not something you want to read, I do think you would like this. But at the same time, if you want that, it still feels like there is something, if that makes sense. <laughs> and so it was just absolutely everything. I don't know what else to say. I feel like I should say more, but I am just very emotional about how much I love this book. And so I don't even know what, what more to say, but... I'm so happy that I finally read this and it was just so beautiful. I will most absolutely talk about it again and I do want to get a physical copy because like, 
yeah, at the beginning, I think I said it was giving me kind of four star vibes, but just like it, the more I read, the more I fell in love with the book and the characters, and it was just so fucking wonderful. So yeah, if you would like a book about finding yourself and finding love and a home and care and just like a new purpose and just feeling more comfortable with where you are in life, you need to pick this up. It was just exactly what I needed. And so is going to be the next book we're reading. So I started the next book. I was having a crisis. I think I might have mentioned it to you. I was just like, I don't know what else to read next. Like, I'm really excited about the other books, but it just didn't feel like the right time. And today I'm at the bookstore, you know, uh, <laughs> I was going to go to the coffee shop to read and I wasn't sure what to pick. I literally took three books at first and then I took two. And I was just like, I don't know, like I want to read them, but it just did not feel right in the moment. And then I was looking around and I knew that I had like Waterstones has a thing where you can collect stamps and then you get like a 10 pound credit and you can spend that on a book. And I knew I had that and I was just like, you know what, it would be amazing if I could buy a book today. And I was just looking around the fiction section because they don't fucking have a romance section in the UK. And um, I didn't expect to find anything. I was getting close to like the end of the section. And so I was just like, okay, well, I'm just not going to buy anything today. And then I see this. And the way it was just like meant to be. It was fate. I see Georgie All Along by Kate Claiborne. And this is a book that I've known about, I think, all year. Like, I definitely found out about it before... It came out and it came out in the US and I was going to order it but it just it was really expensive for a while and then I was like maybe I should just read it online because I have the I think I have access to both the audiobook and ebook like on Kindle Unlimited and on Scribd and so I was just like um so I was just like you know I should do that um but I really wanted the physical copy because I felt like I would just completely fall in love with it because like it's, I don't, it, I, it, so far I have read, um, up to page 128, and so close to the halfway point, I read all that at that coffee shop within, like, one hour, <laughs> um, so it feels kind of similar in some ways, so thank you for listening when it comes to the depth behind it but very different in like the plot and the vibes and whatever. And I, again, want to read you some blurbs because like I knew that this book again would hit me so hard into that, like it would reach into the depths of my heart and make me feel less alone and understood and just, oh my God. And it is doing exactly that so far. <laughs> and I'm so happy. So I have heard so much about Kate Claiborne. Uh, a lot of people that I trust really love her books and I've been wanting to read them for a thousand years. But just, again, like, I didn't really see them at the bookstore or anything, and I just never really, I don't know. And um, one blurb says, a love story that proves you can go home again. Another one says, a sweet novel that reminds you going back is sometimes the best path forward. Also, the first sentence of the blurb is, Georgie McCauley has made a career out of prioritizing others. Like, that sounds exactly like Elsie from Love Theoretically. <laughs> and I need more of that energy because, like, I relate very hard. And, like, I need more heroines like this because I, I feel like the more heroines I read about that are similar to me in some ways are going to hopefully make me see that I need to give myself the love that I feel for them as well, you know? Because I fucking love them. So uh, we have Georgie, obviously, and Levi. And basically, Georgie was kind of fired from her last job because she was working for this like director screenwriter um and she was her assistant and they were kind of friends or whatever and just you know they were obviously working closely together and she basically tells her that you know i want to you know find some like peace in life <laughs> and focus less on work and whatever and so she kind of like fires her and she tells her that she thinks that georgie should go and find what she find out actually what she actually wants for for herself so georgie's like what the fuck do i want because you know she was so focused on doing what she could as the assistant and just for other people in general and so she basically also was living with the woman that she was working for and so she has to move back to her hometown and her parents are gone for like i don't know a month or something so she goes to their house and levi also thinks thought that she, he would be staying out of the house 
So, you know, the parents are like, oh my gosh, like that slipped my mind. I don't know what I was thinking. Most probably they just kind of organized that to happen, you know, but whatever. They just end up staying at this house together at Georgie's parents' house because Levi, basically something in his house is getting fixed or whatever. And so they both really need the place. <laughs> and it is a, also like a small town setting. And so both of them used to live there and um, they used to, you know, it is a small town, so like a lot of the people know each other. Georgie used to have a crush on Levi's brother. And Levi also is actually like, does not have a good relationship with his family. There's just something that definitely like went wrong. There's like a lot of shitty things that happened that we don't know yet. And clearly Levi is just, just in general, he's an outcast and like a black sheep in the family and whatever. It is like he immediately, she basically th says like, is that, you know, when she first sees him, she thinks he's Evan for a second. And he immediately like gets jealous and angry and he clearly has issues with that. And so it's definitely gonna cause some drama. <laughs> And I just love this. It really feels like home to read this book. It feels so like reassuring and beautiful and in again very different ways than thank you for listening but also very similar ways like it's reaching into the depths of my heart. Love the romance so far. Love the forced proximity. Obviously I live for this. It is a trope that I've read before. I can't think of like the specific books. Um, oh my gosh the um What's it called? Uh, Twice Shy by Sarah Hogle. Also, honestly, a similar vibe, and it is a yellow book. I unfortunately think I don't have it here, um, which is heartbreaking. I think I have it at my parents' house, but it is one of my favorite books, and it also feels kind of like a more emotionally deep romance that is just so beautiful and wonderful and has like some meaningful things in the main character's personal developments as well as just being a wonderful, beautiful romance. So I think like, <laughs> if you like any of these books, you need to read the others, if that makes sense. So yeah, anyways, I am living for this and I'm so happy that I found this book or the book found me today, to be honest. So we're gonna read this. And then I do think after that, we're gonna read like a bit of a different genre, but right now I'm just thriving when it comes to this. I also got this random yellow thing that actually I did not plan that, but I had it, I took it out of the bag, like, and I was just like, I might as well show this to you. I've never tried this, but um, I was at the grocery store and they had it and I just wanted a snack. Since I don't have any yellow um, clothes, I at least have some yellow things. So I'm gonna go snack on this. <laughs> I'm gonna go keep reading. I am also gonna bake brownies, which is most certainly not yellow, but um, just so you know, I am very excited to do that because I normally hate baking. And last week I tried to bake brownies for the first time and uh, they ended up kind of dry. I very much like the very moist, yeah, I said the word, <laughs> uh, brownies. And it was not that, but it was edible. It was also not with weed, so it wasn't an edible. I really need to shut up. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna try again because you know what? Sometimes things don't go as great as we would hope, but it's great that we tried it and it would be great if we try again because like we can always get better and obviously first time trying something is not gonna be the best time. And that means, isn't it good that we can improve? You know, if we did it amazing the first time and then we fucked it up every time after, that would suck a lot more. I'm gonna shut up now. <laughs> I'll go read and I'll talk to you soon. Y'all, I... <laughs> I just finished Georgie All Along by Kate Claiborne and I don't even, like... I don't even know what it's... I... <laughs> I am so, so happy that the book found me yesterday <laughs> and that I got it, that I read it, that it exists. I am speechless. I can't believe, like, I'm so happy that I listened to the feeling that I had to read it physically because, like, oh my god, this was an incredible experience. I don't even know how to, like, talk about it and how to put it into words. All the books that I've been reading in this video, like, I literally, I've... I literally feel so overwhelmed. I'm like, after this, we need to read something more chill. Like, something that does not make my heart completely explode. This book was absolutely everything to me. Like, a new 
all-time favorite. Like, I need to read every single book by Kate Claiborne, and I'm so happy that she has a lot of books. I already started adding all of them to my wish list. <laughs> I just, like, I don't know what to do with myself. This book felt like home. It felt so beautiful. It was absolutely lovely. It was perfect and everything that I could want. <laughs> and oh my god, Georgie and Levi are everything to me. The love they have together is everything. It is so gentle and soft and beautiful and passionate and lovely and perfect. And I... <laughs> I look at the, I oh my god like this one does have both of their points of view and I don't know I was scared of the conflict I was scared of how the family situation for Levi would like end up happening in the book and I felt like it was perfect the way that everything happened made sense for the story. I feel like I can't be coherent right now, you know? I've said this before, and I'm gonna say it again. The quote, like, maybe if I loved you less, I could talk about it more. I really have that with every single thing on earth, with people, with things, like, everything. If I love something so, like, really hard, I I can't talk about it. Like, I don't, I don't know how to talk about this book. Because it was literally everything. It was perfection. It took over my heart. Like, it reached the depths once again. And I want to cry and I want to smile. And um, I would say more, but I'm literally speechless. So just please pick up this book. Um, wow. Uh, yeah. I, <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to read next. I need a second to, re like, rec rec recover. Hi everyone, so we have a severe lack of yellow, but I have to talk to you anyway. I have found our next book, and I'm so happy, and I'll tell you why in a second when I actually tell you what it is. So, <laughs> it's called An Appetite for Miracles by Lake and Zia Kemp, and first of all, this cover. When I ran into it, I was just like, we have to read it. Not only is it beautifully yellow, it also just has beautiful vibes that feel perfect for September. And I just, I absolutely love it. Is it actually orange or? It's yellow and orange, I feel like. I have read, I think, one book by this author before that I really enjoyed. And I also found out that this book is a novel in verse and it's YA. And I'll read you the little description because it made me just want to immediately pick it up. So it says, this is Lincoln Zia Kemp's heart-wrenching novel in verse that follows two teens who must come together to heal the pain from their pasts, perfect for fans of Elizabeth Acevedo and Nicola Yoon. So I just absolutely love books that are like emotional and hopeful and just books that have a lot of pain but a lot of healing. Basically that's like my favorite kind of stories and it's been a while since I read a YA contemporary book <laughs> and it also has been a while, a long time since I read a novel in verse and it is something that I this year I think, maybe last year, I realized I absolutely love that. I love novels in verse, but I haven't read that many, and also a lot of them were middle grade, and I feel like this one has even more beautiful writing than I ever saw before, and I think the main reason why is because the middle grade, you know, obviously the writing is a bit more simple, that's not to say I still didn't love them and it wasn't, like, good writing, but this one feels really poetic and just, like, so beautiful, but at the same time it's not, like, too much and the story still makes sense and everything feels really well developed and I also already feel really invested in the characters, so I did only read, like, 21%, but I wanted to talk to you already because, like, I have a feeling, <laughs> especially since it's, you know, written in verse, it is, like, a short, quick read, and I have a feeling that, like, I'm gonna dive deep and then I'm suddenly gonna finish the whole thing, and, um... Today, I had a super slow day at work, and so I'm kind of hoping 
that I'll be able to read a lot of it at work tomorrow as well because I am going to sleep soon. So um, yeah, I'm absolutely loving it. We have Dana and Raul and the two of them have basically been struggling with a lot of grief in different ways. And Dana, basically her gra grandpa has dementia and so it deals with that a lot and she is just, you know, struggling a lot with that. Her whole family is struggling with that and uh, Raul's mother uh, went to prison and so he is struggling with the grief of missing her and, you know, people like knowing that she's in pre prison and the judgment and... All of those emotions, there's just so many feelings and they kind of like meet through like family member, like family members that know each other and stuff. And so, um, yeah, I just got to the point where they meet, so I can't talk about like the romance part, but I already feel like it's gonna be so beautiful. And I just feel like the stories where two people bond over like grief that might be different but still feels similar and you know finding that like home within each other and being able to heal together and find hope together i think that's like some of the most beautiful stories ever so absolutely loving it so far and i'm so happy i feel like i just kind of randomly found this book today like again i knew the author already but like i don't know if i knew of this book specifically and if i did i forgot that i had it and i was just like i saw the cover and i was like okay we're reading this right this second so i'm so happy i'll shut up now and i'll probably talk to you tomorrow or just very soon uh when i finish the book hi everyone so it is time for an update i have not filmed in like a week so this feels very weird but I finished An Appetite for Miracles and I'm halfway through another book and we are going to get close to wrapping up this video and I have this new mug that I got that I'm obsessed with. I do want to buy some like actually autumnal ones and I have two, I have two mugs in my basket on Redbubble and I'm so excited to get that. And I also just redid my bookshelves. So this video started way too long ago for the plan to actually be for it to be like autumnal vibes. But at this point, obviously, I kind of want to end it that way. Let's talk about An Appetite for Miracles. I don't fully remember at what stage I updated you. This book is absolutely beautiful. It ended up being a five star read, which I didn't even like really expect. Because again, like I did read one book by this author, but... But I'm pretty sure that was like a middle grade fantasy or something like that and um, did enjoy that but I just did not know what to expect with this one. But it is just such a raw, emotional, beautiful story. I did put the trigger warnings on my Goodreads and so that's, I think my Goodreads should always be linked down below. Um, do check that if you feel like you need to because like it gets really heavy at some points in many different ways where like some things I did not expect at all. But yeah, so it is a very emotional, quite heavy story at some points but at the same time it has so much hope and healing in it. And I felt like the romance in this was just like so beautiful and it went really deep and the love was just so wonderful and they really found a home together and like they could heal together like it took over my heart even more than i could have expected highly recommend it and i definitely want to read more books by this author that are like i know she has like young adult contemporary like actual normal novels and maybe some other things but either either way this was wonderful absolutely recommend it and I think more people need to read and write <laughs> novels in verse because like if you're someone who struggles to like focus on books, you prefer shorter books or you know things like that, I feel like that would be absolutely perfect for you because this book did the best job at actually being a fully fleshed out in-depth story that makes you like it makes you get to know the characters, it resonates with you emotionally, like every single part of it, it like felt like a novel without all the words. And that just fascinates me so much about novels and verse that like the authors can make it that way, that it feels like, you know, you can imagine the scenes and you can get to know the characters, like all those things. I am so impressed by that. And this was just like the best job that like, some of the best work I've seen in like a novel and verse. Let me know if you'd like me to do a recommendations video on novels 
on Novels Inverse, and please let me know if you have any recommendations, because <laughs> I am always desperate for, for more. I love poetry. I love novels, <laughs> and I'm so happy that we got one that's, like, a lot different from the others, and obviously I read, like, adult contemporary romance the most, and I do branch out, but lately I have not been branching out that much. And then I started Rude Bound by Tara DeWitt, so this was actually not in my plans originally at all, and it doesn't really have the yellow and orange in, like, the normal way that the others do, but it still has, like, it has pure autumnal vibes and, like, you know, brownish orange and yellow and that shit, so absolutely works in my opinion and again I do want to end the video on like a fall-ish note <laughs> and because I am so excited to make autumnal super cozy content this year and so I want to start that as soon as possible and yeah so I don't know if this is gonna be the last book that we read in this video I need to again edit it so I'm gonna do that tomorrow I need to edit it and see how much footage we have I'm really enjoying it so it's basically like a small town romance kind of like the city girl goes to a small town situation a little bit and we have our heroine who at the beginning of the book she basically goes through a super painful horrible like divorce and that's kind of like in the prologue at that moment already i was just like i'm absolutely gonna love this book because i already felt so invested in the heroine and her journey it already like hit me emotionally even though it was like just the beginning the like depth it went into i was just like oh my gosh this is gonna hit me so hard and so we already have like an emotional beginning where she goes through this super painful like breakup slash divorce that is just absolutely horrible kind of like skip two years forward to see how far she's come and the struggles she still faces and so she basically gets this job where she's supposed to take photos for this like um ranch and for this reality show specifically because they're doing like a show at this ranch following this family and everything and so she basically goes there, she accepts the job without knowing what ranch it is and whatever, and then she finds out that it actually is the ranch owned by her father that she has not been in contact with for a super long time. He divorced her mom a long time ago and they, he just basically abandoned their family and all of that and she did not hear from him or the whole family in a really long time, just like in ways that did not feel like they wanted to connect with her at all and they just she felt like they did not want to have a relationship with her and all that so she completely just did not want to be in contact with them anymore and just did not you know trust them and anything like that and so she accepts this job and then she finds out that it's the, her father and everything and she wants to back out but she can't really do that and so she has to come to this ranch and immediately she find, she meets this guy who you know works at this small town at the farm and all of that and um, he's not like a part of her family, but he basically, they kind of like took him in. And so our heroine is thrown into the small town and has to face the family that she was kind of like avoiding that, you know, has this complicated whole thing with. And it is like a very, so far I'm loving it so much. And it is, definitely feels very cozy and like emotional and... I just, I don't know how to describe it exactly, but I'm really loving it. So it definitely explores the family dynamics while still feeling um, like it, it focuses on the romance a lot. And I'm so excited to see where it goes. Um, obviously, the heroine is like very, like holding back super a lot when it comes to love in any way, like getting close to anyone, not just romantically, but even like in the family situation. And I just absolutely love her journey so far. And... I'm excited to see where it goes. So I think that's all that I'm going to say about it now. And again, I'm going to update you with either the final updates or we might read at least one more book. I can't decide. <laughs> Hi everyone. So it is me from the intro here to tell you my final thoughts on Rudebound and to wrap up this video. So I just finished editing it, except for this clip obviously, and I had so much fun. I read so many incredible books and I honestly, editing it, I felt almost emotional 
because obviously a lot of these books meant a lot to me and it was just like maybe even my favorite like I don't want to say that because I've just been loving all these videos so much and I hope you've been enjoying watching them I don't know what it is about it I just love it so much and I already can't wait to jump into the next one I'm just really grateful so Rude Bound did end up being like a 4.5 star I don't think I loved it as much as the other books by Tara DeWitt but that being said I still absolutely loved it it felt so like cozy and domestic in some ways and I felt like the way that it like explored the family relationships and all the things around it were just really well done and I enjoyed that part as well as the romance which just like was really sweet and I think I ended up loving it even more in the second half than the first half like the romance really won me over and it was just like so wonderful a little steamy and I just love Tara DeWitt even though this was not a five star I do think that she has become one of my favorite authors maybe not fully like reaching the completely highest level yet but definitely an author that I absolutely love and I cannot wait for her next book and so I will definitely be reading that immediately. And so, yeah, I do think that Funny Feelings remains my favorite of hers, but this was still wonderful and I do still highly recommend it. I do think it's perfect to read in the fall and it was just amazing. So that is going to be a wrap on this video. I, <laughs> I don't know. I've already said everything, but I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know if you've read any of these books and what books you love that are yellow as well. <laughs> and yeah, or orange. Uh, so yeah, if you made it this far in the video, leave any kind of yellow or orange emoji down below. And thank you so much for watching. Have a great day and I'm going to see you soon in another video. Bye!